So we've been taking a look at working with custom Python functions. I want to talk about one more thing here that deals with re retrieving information from the user through a function, through the function arguments, and then returning something back to the user once the function is done. In order to do this, we're going to experiment and learn about the return keyword within our functions. Take a look. Now, I've opened in front of you, I got shell open, Python shell, and I've got a new brand new document open here. I just got a comment in there, remind me what we're about to talk about. We're gonna talk about the return keyword within a function. Now, I'm gonna define just a simple little function here that adds some numbers based on input from a user. So I'll say uh, def uh, add nums. And I'm gonna pass in, or I'm gonna require that two values get passed into this function. So I'm going to call it arg1 and arg2, colon. All right. So now I can take arg1 and I can add that to arg2. Right? There we have it. There's my function. Now I built one very similar to this in an earlier lecture where I printed, I used the print method to print out the... Uh, addition or the sum of those two values. So then in order to use this function, I would say something like add nums and I would pass in the two numeric values. Now, if I run this right now, there's my result four, right? I made a call to the add nums function and I gave it two values. Ding, did its job and it printed out those values. That's great. But you know what? Maybe I don't want to print it out. There's something else that I want to do with the result of add nums. I don't want to print it to the screen. I want to get it and maybe I want to use it in another calculation or I want to use it in some other formatted string or whatever the case. I want to do something with it. I don't want to rely on the function. I want the function to do the addition and that's it. And then give me the value back. That's it. So instead of printing, I'm not going to print it. I'm going to have it return the value. So in my function add nums, again, it's asking for two arguments to be passed to it. I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it total. And I'm going to make total equal to the results of those two numbers being added together. Now, inside the function, I am then going to use the return keyword to return total, to return that variable back. So now I've got add nums, two comma two. It's going to do its job. It's going to run the function. It's going to take those two, pass them into the arguments, where it's then going to add those two together, place it inside this variable called total, and then it'll return that. Now watch this. If I go ahead and save this and run this, let's see what happens. All right, it ran, it restarted the, uh, the shell interface here, but it didn't output anything to me. Remember last time we printed the results. Now we're asking it to return that. So now out here, I'm gonna say a new total equals add nums two and two and then I'm going to print new total. And there are other ways you can do this as well. But I've created a new variable, assigned it the add nums function, which takes the two numbers, adds them together, then returns the value. So now new total contains the returning value of total within the function. Whew. Let's go ahead and run that F5. And there's my four. Just like that. Now I could also do this, this, this may not be as, as much movement in there and whatnot. I could just say print that right there. I don't have to put it into a variable. That's not necessary just for the explanation here. Um, but the variable might be, might be helpful if you're going to use that value again and again after the function gets done and returns it back to you. But if I just print this, I'm going to get the same results. I get the four. So now add nums takes the numbers, adds them up, and then returns it back. And then you can decide what to do with it. I could say print it. I could do this. 
I could say, oh, add nums. Uh, let's do some other numbers. Let's do three and three. Then I'm going to add that. Actually, let's multiply that. Let's multiply that by three. We'll save that. We'll go ahead and F5 to execute. All right, there's the four, right, from this guy. But remember this one, it returns it back. Then we're going to multiply that by three. But what am I missing here? Well, I didn't output anything to the screen. So I am going to bring in my print. And let's print that out. All right, we'll run this again. Nope, oh, I misspelled print. We'll run that again. And there's my 18. So 3 plus 3 is 6 times 3 is 18. There it is. So now we're not only getting the function to do some work for us, but we're getting it to return a value that you can then utilize and manipulate in whatever way throughout the rest of your program. Again, you create it once with the function, and then your possibilities are practically limitless. You can do whatever you want with that value now. Just output it, do some additional math with it, whatever it might be. Build some logic in there. Again, possibilities here. Try it out. Utilizing the return keyword, bring in a total variable, return that variable, and then do something with it outside of the function itself.